Okay, hello everyone and welcome back to Through the Pages with Dee. This will be a bit freaky because right now I'm on holiday. I'm not actually here, I'm in Wales. But I thought to myself, should I leave that whole week with no content? And then I thought, no, not really. I've got tags that I could do. So I'm doing these ahead of time. So today is Thursday. Um, not sure of the date. Bear with me. What date is it? 20th. Um, Thursday the 20th of June and I am filming this tag. Um, so this is a tag that I was tagged in by Pat from Book Chat with Pat and it is called the Read Smart Tag. So here we go. I haven't really put much thought into this so we're just going to fly by the seat of our pants. See how we go. So Read Smart Tag question one. What is your strategy to stay focused and engaged while reading? What I do is I take a lot of notes, prolific notes, um, to be quite honest. Um, so as I read, if something captures my attention, I generally note it down. I firstly start off by writing down characters so I don't forget names. I write down the place where the book is or the story is taking place. I make a note of character names. And then as I go along, if there's an interesting factor or an occurrence in the story, I generally write it down in the notes so that way I can stay engaged. I don't really have many interruptions because most of the time I'm here on my own. Um, everybody else is at work. So, you know, it's quite easy for me really to stay engaged. If I come across a difficult book and I'm not staying engaged in it, what I usually do is bookmark it with the notes and I'll come back to it at a later date, which is something that I've done with a couple of books really. So they're not really DNF'd. They're just... Uh, a DNR, don't read now, um, until I can actually get myself into the mindset of getting into them. So that's my answer to question one. Question two, how does your environment influence, influence your focus and what can you do to optimise it? So I don't have any distractions at all. I don't have any TV, sound, anything. Um, my phone doesn't really bother me, but I do generally tend to have it near me because of my daughters. But other than that, there's no outs there's no nothing around me that you know would distract me there's no radio no tv no nothing I, i'm in complete silence um and i just read um and that's the way that i basically stay focused no other distractions um my phone can be blipping all at once with you know discord or whatever it is unless it's one of my girls or you know a family member i don't generally tend to go towards my phone so I do spend quite a few hours reading um, and that's how I get through quite a lot of books. Question three, what methods do you use to retain and recall information from what you've read? Again, note taking. I take prolific notes. Um, sometimes some books need more notes than others, as i.e. Malazan, that, like I've said in many videos, it took a full A4 pad and then some with just um, Memories of Ice. House of Chains didn't take as many notes, but it did take a few. So yeah, I do take prolific notes and I keep them with the book. So even if I'm not reviewing the book there and then, or within the next few days, I put the notes into the book so that I can just go back to them as and when I'm about to review it. So that's how I do that. Um, number four, how do you approach difficult or challenging material? Well, I've learned from reading Malazan and Robin Hobb um, that there can be quite testing um, literature out there. I know there's more than that, but those are quite testing for me. The book I'm reading at the moment, um, which I may have finished by this point, is Invisible Man by Ralph Ellison. And that has proven to be quite testing. I wouldn't say necessarily wholeheartedly in the vocabulary that's used, but there are sections where it is quite Shakespearean in its, in its writings. So I have struggled with that a little bit. How do I resolve that issue? If I don't reread it and go over it, I take a few moments just to see if I can potentially work it out by myself. If I can read it more slowly, take more time to take it in. Um, other than that, I'll just research. If, if I don't know a particular word or what it means, I'll just go to Google um, and do a quick search. 
write that down for future reference. Um, and so I do do a lot of writing in between reading, to be honest. There is an awful lot of note taking going on. And then when it comes to sort of reviewing time, I'll go back over my notes and I'll condense it down to something more that I can talk about. Because quite a lot of my note taking is spoilery. Um, it's to keep me on the, on track with the story. So a lot of it can be spoilery. So what I do is I condense it to what I can actually say. Um, so that's generally how I do that. Um, number five, I think we're on. What role, do, what role does note taking and annotation play in your reading process? So like I said, I take a lot of notes, an awful lot of notes. But as far as annotating goes, I don't really do that. I do a version of it, I suppose. So I have sort of slim post-it notes. And if there are sections of a book where I want to quote or go back to when I'm reviewing, that is where I'll mark off. And I'll, because I'm able to write on the little post-its, I'll write what it is that I'm referencing that for. So I've done that in a few books, not lots, but a few that have taken my interest and you know, there's particular sections that I want to talk about. I've just done it recently with another book that I'm reading. There's some in Invisible Man. There's some in um, The Once and Future Witches. I'm, I'm, I do do that. It's a form of annotation, I suppose, but it's not direct annotation. But I do kind of do it in a way. I'm more a note taker. I more have my A4 pad sat with me where I read at my table and take notes as and when I feel the need to. So I do. They're, they're quite prevalent in my reading note taking it's it's quite a big thing now, now that I'm reviewing books anyway before when I was reading just for reading's sake I didn't do that because um, I was just reading for me it's not like I was going to tell anybody afterwards but now that I'm doing YouTube and I'm telling people about the book um, I feel I have to be more factual and more precise in my content so I do take a lot more notes um, number six how do you balance reading for pleasure with reading for personal or professional development well, all my reading is really for pleasure. I don't really read for anything that's for personal development um, or pre professional development. I have done when I've done um, courses, etc. But my current reading is just pleasure for me. Um, and it just so happens to go that I was enjoying reading so much. I wanted people to talk to about it. I wanted book friends because I don't have any. So in joining YouTube, I gained book friends. But off the back of that, you feel a kind of a responsibility as a booktuber to be as effective and as factual as you possibly can. So therefore, then it does kind of become a bit of a job. But it's not, a you know, a, a, a job you don't like. Obviously, you're reading the books you want to read. Um, if anything, it's like a, the, an ideal job. It's just a job you don't get paid for, um, which I would like to get paid for it. But um, I just I, I read for pleasure. So it's it doesn't really feel like it's a task sometimes it can be with whatever you're reading as in malazan that was a little bit of a task a little bit draining plus i was doing it every day um and which meant taking notes every day quite prolific notes every day just so that the vlogs made sense the vlogs were cohesive cohesive um but yeah generally i just read for pleasure i don't read for anything else number seven what is the the importance of setting reading goals um, I don't know that I actually really set reading goals I think maybe the only reading goals I set myself is sort of a me challenge how many books can I read in a month and then I might go back and look at how many books have I read for the year not forgetting that this is my first year coming up um, well I, I'm in the midst of my first year I should say I'm kind of six months in um, yeah, um, I suppose I really probably look at what I read in a month and then maybe look at what I've read so far for this year. I know last year, just out of curiosity, because my girls were curious because I'd, I'd read quite a lot, um, they were curious to how many books I'd actually read. So I went back and I counted and it was 86 in six months, which is quite an achievement. That's quite a lot of books. But that was more achievable because I wasn't talking about them. I wasn't doing videos about them. I was literally just reading them for me. So I was getting through two, three hundred page books in a day. Um, and it, it, it was relatively easy. But when you've got to report, not got to, when you decide to do YouTube and you're reporting back on books um, because you're now a booktuber and you've got people watching, you take it obviously more seriously. 
Um, you're still reading for pleasure, but you take it more seriously. So you want your facts to be delivered correctly. So I don't read as much as I was, or I don't read as quick as I was, um, because I'm taking notes. So I don't. I'm not. I, what I'm finding is, I don't think at this point I'm getting through as much material as I was. But it's not something that is a major concern to me. It's just something that you know. I just, I just do. Um, I don't have any goals. Um, I'd like to read a hundred books this year, um, or a hundred plus. Um, I think I'm at f getting close to fifty, so I may achieve it. Um, although I am on holiday now, uh, but I may achieve it. I may not, but it's not, it's not a necessity for for the reading. The reading is just about enjoying what I'm reading. Um, it's it's not about what the goals such as you know things like that. Um, number eight. What are some strategies for overcoming reading slumps or lack of motivation? I have to say, as of yet, I haven't really experienced that properly. Although I did find that once I'd done uh, Malazan May, even though I only read two books that month, which is, if you're talking about goals, if you want to go back to question seven for a second, um, I really did think I'd get to the four books in May. I kind of deluded myself thinking that um yeah I can do, I can do four books I've I've done 13 in a month of course I can do four books easy peasy but the way that I was doing it daily vlogging there was no way I was getting to the four I managed two um so after I'd read Malazan going back to question 8 after I'd read Malazan what I was picking up wasn't hitting um Malazan is such a different read. It's such a different sort of... I don't know how to explain it. It's so vast in its fantasy and so complex in its characters and some of its writing that it is very, very different from anything else you read. So to go back to something more simple, such as maybe, I don't know, a, th a thriller or a crime or a mystery, um, it doesn't sit very well. You sh You struggle because you're not reading the same kind of context as you was with Malazan so it took me a little minute to find something that that fit um I tried a few different books I have to be honest I picked up maybe 10 and read like first chapters were going into second chapters but they just weren't gluing so I ended up I can't even remember what book I actually landed on I think it might have been the game um yeah I think it was the game yeah, The Game by Scott Kershaw. I'm pretty certain that was the book that I landed on. Um, again, it was simple text, but the story was quite good. So I pushed on through it, and I did that on purpose. I kind of pushed myself through something that was simple to get myself away from that sort of, how do I explain this, this kind of higher um, vocabulary-loaded written literature to something of a more normal standard, if that makes sense without sounding um, quite pompous. Because most, I think most people sort of down credit books like James Patterson and things like that because they're not up there in the literary standards. They're not your Robin Hobbs. They're not your Stephen Erickson's. They're not your Shakespeare's. So they kind of get downtrodden sometimes as if they're not this amazing piece of literary, you know, text. When actually if you're just looking for a good story i sometimes don't think it matters how it's written um so long as the story is good it can be written in the most simple text of all time but as long as that story takes you on a journey that's all we can ask for as readers but it was just that switch between that very high placing um work by stephen erickson that is malazan to back to something of a more basic standard but I don't want to turn out to be quite snobbish in my reading. So um, I, just, I went back to kind of basic um, format of literature and I'm fine again now. So I, I haven't really suffered with a reading slump or a lack of motivation. I still really enjoy reading. Um, it's, it's at the moment sort of my life. That's all I do. Um, so the final thing is to tag some people. So who I think might quite enjoy, well, it, this is open to anybody who sees this. If you want to have a go at it, please do. 
Um, you know, it's a free for all. If you want to join in on a tag, go for it. But there's a few people who I want to tag who I think might actually enjoy this when they get round to it. First off, somebody who I do think would really enjoy answering these questions and who would give some superb answers is Britain. Uh, my little buddy Britain from the channel Smoky Dude. Um, I think he'd have some real insight into some of these. So I'm going to say Britain. So Britain, consider yourself tagged. Um, I also am going to say Darko uh, because he's my bester. I don't think he's been tagged in this already. So I'm going to say Darko. I'd like to hear Darko's answers for this. Um, and he has a different strategy of reading. He does mostly ebook reading. So I'd be curious to see what some of his answers are. Um, especially where it comes to you know the challenging text and do you note take so I'd be interested in that aspect I'm also going to tag my beautiful friend Alicia from Birdie in the Books I think she'd give us some fun answers to these questions yeah and I also want to tag Rabin from Only the Best Fantasy Novels that's his channel he recommended a book to me which I have mentioned um, and I think this recommendation that Rabin gave to me may or could well be my book of the year for 2024. Um, sometimes a book just has an effect on you where it's it suits everything about you. And Rabin just watched one of my videos and I think it was the top 10 authors that I have to buy. And he made this comment and gave a few authors that he would particularly choose and this author was within that selection and I said I haven't heard of that author and he said oh well this book is is the one I'd say to read so I got it straight away because the cover was amazing and I can't stop reading it I will mention it at some other time but so yeah Rabin from um only the best fantasy novels it is the other one who I tag. So yeah, that's um, my version of the Read Smart tag. I hope, Pat, that I've done you justice with my answers. I didn't really think about this one. I just thought I'd just do it and, and just answer um, honestly and off the top of my head. So I hope that's okay. And I look forward to the videos of the people that I've tagged um, as and when they get round to it. But if you see this and you want to have a go, consider yourself tagged. Have a go at it. Um, I'll put the questions in the description for you and I will see you all when I get back from my hollybobs. Until then, bye bye. Hey everyone, thanks as usual for watching this video and if you want more content you can click on one of the following links. Thanks so much for your support. See you again next time.